429 this morning. Now in the San Fernando Valley where the epicenter is located, that quake was felt as a very sharp jolt. Like so many of us, you must be used to earthquakes. Put this one into comparison for us. Uh, wasn't too crazy. I mean, you're used to like a little shake here and there, but this one was a little stronger than normal, so. The shock could be felt in Cyprus, Syria, and Israel. In what should have been the best day of her life, a bride poses for her wedding photos. As the blast rips through, she's seen running for her life. A priest live streaming a service when the shockwaves hit. Stained glass raining down as the church shakes. Next, new evacuations in Southern California tonight as a wildfire burns across some 2,000 acres. The so-called Apple Fire breaking out yesterday afternoon, exploding overnight. Threatening thousands of people and homes east of Los Angeles. So-called Apple Fire that broke out near the city of San Bernardino. They are working in temperatures well above 37 degrees Celsius amid dry, gusty winds. The fire is still out of control. Flames broke out late Friday afternoon. In just hours, what started as multiple small brush fires is now out of control, covering nearly 2,000 acres and growing. Helicopters and ground crews futilely trying to put out the apple fire as it tears through Cherry Valley, east of Los Angeles. Well, aftershocks are rattling Southern California after a magnitude 4.2 quake hit the San Fernando Valley this morning. And this video that you're looking at here, this is video of the shaking right in our studio here in Glendale. Whoa, earthquake. Oh man, that was a pretty decent sized one. That was Mr. Baum's reaction when he felt the 4.2 earthquake as he was live streaming in Hollywood just before 4.30 this morning. He was already up, but home security videos caught the jolt waking up several dogs, one in Studio City, another in Highland Park. They weren't the only ones shaken out of their slumber. It was like a, just a, a hard boom. Josh Basham, the founder and CEO of Early Warning Labs and Quake Alert, felt the shaking in West Hollywood from this morning's 4.2 earthquake. This is what it looked like at a home in Porter Ranch, followed by a 3.9 aftershock a couple hours later. And this morning's shaker occurred on the intersection of faults responsible for the 1971 San Fernando earthquake and the 1994 Northridge quake. This is really the first one we've had in a long while that's been in an urban area. Uh, and I think this is a real uh, wake up call for us all. It is 75 years since a U.S. Air Force plane dropped an atom bomb on the city of Hiroshima in western Japan. Three days later, another bomb was dropped on the city of Nagasaki. On August the 6th, Japan stops to remember what happened at Hiroshima. To mourn the tens of thousands who were incinerated and to recommit itself to the abolition of nuclear weapons. We need to acquire nuclear weapons so that the bomb will never be dropped on our homeland again, especially now with the threat from China. China has some 300 nuclear missiles aiming at Japan, and we have North Korea. That country is like a madman holding a knife. The remaining survivors of Hiroshima are worried that the lessons of August the 6th, 1945, are being forgotten. Uh, let's show you the uh, latest pictures from Beirut uh, this afternoon. The latest chapter, it seems, latest installment in that country's uh, recent story of misery. I was in my apartment when I first heard the blast. I felt an immediate uh, shake and boom. It was almost as if there was an earthquake and a bomb explode all at once. Glass shattering all around her. Sama's apartment is in ruins. The shockwaves leveling buildings, blowing out windows, felt over a hundred miles away in Cyprus. It began as a very large blaze, a towering grey column and flashes from what looked like fireworks. But worse was to follow. A massive explosion. And as it erupted, an important clue emerged in the colour of the smoke, a reddish brown, which meant that ammonium nitrate was involved in vast quantities. A crater filled with water where a building once stood, an American living in Beirut describing the nightmare. 
I ran down to the street to see what was going on, kind of took cover because so much glass was falling from, uh, from a bit of everywhere and so much glass on the street. The pandemic and economic collapse hitting as the country was already facing a staggering financial crisis. As days of mourning and months, if not years, of healing lie ahead, one grandmother plays old Lang Syne. A serenade for a shattered nation amid the ruins of her apartment. A moment her granddaughter called simply beauty from the ashes. There's some unbelievable scenes playing out there. This has really exacerbated, just multiplied the suffering uh, in Lebanon. You hear people say here that we're cursed, you know, as Lebanese people, we're cursed. Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, I can't stress enough quite how difficult life already was for ordinary Lebanese people. A lot of them have lost their life savings. They can't get their money out of the bank. They've lost their job. There are shortages of food, electricity. The power is only on for two hours a day. And then suddenly this happens and they're made homeless. Uh, so the humanitarian needs for the country are absolutely enormous. The U.S. government has offered uh, humanitarian assistance. And actually, in a remarkable move, even Israel sworn enemy of Lebanon, the two countries have consistently gone to war with each other. Israel has offered not just medical assistance, but also humanitarian assistance. Israel even projecting an image of the Lebanese flag on a building in downtown Tel Aviv. Torrential rains fill up this dam in the Yemeni region of Marib, forcing it to overflow. Since it was rebuilt in the 1980s, there are growing fears it could collapse. Nearby refugee camps have been damaged. The rains have also downed power lines and destroyed crops. The floods have killed or injured dozens. The UN estimates more than 10,000 people who were displaced have been uprooted once again. Heavy rain started two weeks ago, battering several provinces. In the capital, Sana'a, Flood water swept through parts of the city last week, damaging shops and markets. Residents watched on as cars drifted away. Some tried to rescue those caught up in the currents. Nearly six years of fighting between the Houthis and Yemen's internationally recognized government has left the country in ruins. It's also battling the world's largest cholera outbreak. At least 15 people have died and more than 1,500 have been forced from their homes after torrential rain triggered floods and landslides in South Korea. Two areas have been declared disaster zones after 42 consecutive days of rain, the country's longest monsoon in seven years. The rescue effort is being complicated by restrictions. In France, almost 2,000 firefighters have been trying to extinguish wildfires to the west of Marseille, which broke out on Tuesday. Some 2,700 people have had to be evacuated from campsites and residential areas. The fires, which cover an area uh, of about 10 square kilometers in Martigues, are now thought to be under control. Floods are an annual occurrence during the monsoon season, but conservationists say they're becoming more severe. Taking refuge from the floods, one-horned rhinos gather on artificially built highlands in India's Kaziranga National Park. More than half of the 1,000 square kilometer wildlife reserve is underwater. Heavy monsoon rains in the northeastern Assam state have killed 143 of the park's inhabitants over the past month, including 16 rhinos. It's a similar picture elsewhere in northern India where buildings have been inundated with rainwater. Monsoon rains in Bihar have killed several people and displaced 1.5 million at a time when the state is in lockdown to contain the spread. After tropical storm Isaias lashed the east coast today, the powerful storm spawned at least 20 tornadoes, unleashing powerful winds and heavy rains on nearly a third of all Americans. From New York to North Carolina, the storm downed power lines and sparked fires, leaving in its wake flash flooding and destroyed homes. Earlier this week, hurricane hunters with NOAA saw Isaias from above, looming large as it pushed toward the coast. 
This morning, millions waking up in the dark after Isaias raced up the East Coast. Tropical storm Isaias slammed into the Northeast today, still packing near hurricane force winds oh my God, oh my God. at 70 miles per hour. In Bertie County, North Carolina, a tornado decimated this mobile home park. Two people are dead. It's bad. It, it, it doesn't look real. Something you see on TV, it's like nothing is there. In Ocean Isle, North Carolina, beach homes smolder after fires broke out overnight. Images from Google Earth showing neighborhoods like this one in Pennsylvania before the storm, but after the same streets now overwhelmed and underwater. Heavy rains flooded this Maryland neighborhood, washing out roads. Rising waters brought traffic to a halt in Delaware as major flooding trapped drivers in their cars. Isaias was a Category 1 hurricane as it made its presence known off the coast of South Carolina overnight. Bringing powerful storm surge, flash flooding, and property damage. Just hours later, Isaias churned upward and made landfall in North Carolina, leaving hundreds of thousands of people without power. Other possible tornadoes like this one in Ocean City, New Jersey, and wind gusts causing downed trees, wild power lines, and causing this church steeple to come crashing down. Six. The forecasters at Colorado State University have released an August update to their forecast for this hurricane season. They are predicting activity the likes of which we have not seen since 2005. Well, federal weather officials say the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season is off to a record start, so they have revised the hurricane forecast. This comes as we clean up from Isaias. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration now says the 2020 season will likely bring some 19 to 25 named storms. Can you believe that? We've already had nine. Greek letters will be used for storm names if there are more than 25. That happened in 2005. Katrina and Wilma were among the devastating storms that year.